This video is sponsored by Canva. Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna share with you the composition tips that I use when I'm capturing portraits using an 85 millimeter lens. So today I'm gonna to be shooting on the Sony a7 III. We have our model Matilda, Lydia's done makeup and Dan's behind the camera filming. These tips are not like rules or anything that you have to follow. These are just things that I like to do to compose my shots with this telephoto prime. So I really hope you guys enjoy. Can you please stand over here? Maybe just here actually. I like these like branches. If you stand next to it, yeah. The 85 millimeter is the perfect lens for portraits because you can get some very flattering headshots and close-up images. So when I'm shooting headshots, I usually like to frame my shot quite close up, but I do like to keep in a little bit of the collarbones or the shoulders in my frame as it adds a little bit more interest to the photo and it also frames your subject really nicely as well. So I'm gonna take a couple of headshots here. Yeah, I like that with your shoulder in the shot. I like that with your hand in. So when I'm getting portrait orientation, close-up shots in an 85, I do like to leave a little bit of a gap at the top of the frame between the top of the head and like, whatever's in my background. And another thing that I like to do when I'm getting 85 mil close-ups is I like to shoot them in landscape mode. I feel like this adds just a really cinematic touch to your close-up shots. Since the 85 is such a zoomed in lens, there's really a lot of compression. So whatever's on the sides of your shots isn't gonna be very distracting, which is why I like to shoot in landscape so much. Okay, you can you take a little step that way? Yeah. So when I'm shooting in landscape, I do like to crop the top of the head off just a little bit, but I like to be able to see just the whole forehead. And then as you can see, I'm leaving in a little bit of the shoulders in my shot as well. So I don't want my portrait to look like, <laughs> like a floating head or something. So that's why I like the shoulders. One more thing I wanted to share with you guys when it comes to shooting headshots is the angle that you're shooting from. So I feel like when you're shooting with an 85, when you shoot kind of facing downways, it can be a look if that's what you're after, but I find that it looks a little bit awkward framed this way if you're really up high pointing your lens down. I prefer to get down lower and be at eye level with my subject. Before we move on to my next composition tip, I want to let you guys know more about the sponsor of today's video, Canva. Canva is an online design and publishing tool that anyone can use whether you're skilled as a designer or not. There are thousands of pre-made and easily customizable templates on Canva and there are some that I find really useful as a photographer, so I want to share them with you guys. You can create things like Instagram stories with animations, you have photo collages that you can use to create mood boards for your photo shoots, and while you can upload your own photos and video, Canva Pro also has a huge stock library of millions of photos and videos that you can use as well. One of the designs I use a lot as a photographer are the brochure templates. I use them to create pricing packages that I send to my clients. I love that once you've designed everything, you can use the styles tool to filter through different color schemes. I also love their logo designs tool, which you can also really easily customize. This design I chose here is part of Canva Pro. Compared to the free version of Canva, with Canva Pro, you have access to literally millions of photos, videos, and graphics. You also have way more stickers, audio, animation effects, and templates to choose from. So if you are interested in checking it out, please use the link in my description where you can get a 45-day extended trial of Canva Pro. So while I mentioned 
the 85 has a lot of compression, meaning the background looks less distracting. This is where I like to take advantage of the 85 and get a full body shot. So you do have to get quite far away for your, from your subject to get a full body shot. And shooting in portrait mode looks pretty nice. Your subject stands out so easily from the background with that blur. I'm shooting at 1.4. Even if we bring the aperture up to f2, she'll still stand out really nicely from the background. But I think one of the standout things of an 85, which I do a lot, a lot for my wedding photography, is taking a landscape orientation full body shot. So I have to move back even further. Yeah, I love that posing. Beautiful. If you wanna do the arms swaying, kind of half spinning in the spot there as well. Yeah, beautiful. So getting those landscape orientation full body shots is such a cool way to get that one like hero shot of the day. You get to see so much more of the location, but because of the compression of this lens, your subject still stands out, even when you have a super busy background like this. Use it a lot for weddings. I get the couple in like a really cool spot where you can see like mountains or the venue in the background and it's always like the hero shot. <laughs> I'm gonna get part of the dress in the shot as well. So I'm cropping just above your knees. Something else I really like to do with 85 millimeter portraits is making use of foreground blur to make my images look more dynamic. I like that to the side looks really nice. So for these shots here, as you can see, I'm using the branch that's right, right in front of Matilda to add some foreground blur to the shot. And even though I'm shooting at 1.4, the branch isn't super blurry, but it is blurry enough to blend into the image. And I love how the branches just look like they're surrounding her in the portrait. So it kind of, when you look at the final image, all these branches just draw your eye into her face. You could grab your hands and kind of stretch them outwards to look cool. Yeah, beautiful. That looks so nice, very whimsical. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get a little bit closer up shots for this. You can also create foreground blur by holding objects in front of your lens, such as a leaf or a flower, and this will create a small lens flare or a wash of color. And then my final tip, and probably my favorite tip that I always use when I'm shooting with an 85, is that I know I shoot wide open a lot, so it looks like I like bokeh and I rely on it to take nice photos, but I don't think that's the case. Because, for example, if I have Matilda standing here, she's right in front of the trees and the background is just all bokeh and super blurry. But I kind of feel like that looks like a lazy shot because you're making the lens do all the work for you. So kind of going by the adding foreground blur, what I prefer to do is ask my subject to stand in like a little crevice of the trees so they're more surrounded by the, by the background. So instead of getting a shot there, I think I'll get Matilda to stand yeah, as close in there as possible. And as you can see, that just frames her so much nicer. We have some parts of the background that are in focus. We have some parts of the background that are semi out of focus. And then we have the beautiful bokeh out of focus area in the far background as well. But yeah, I just think that looks so much more interesting because instead of there just being a solid blurry background in the photo, this way there are a lot more interesting things to take a look at. So your eye might start at Matilda's face and then you'll kind of gaze down to the tree branches that are in focus. Then it'll swirl back up around where you look at the bokeh. And there's just like a nice like time looking at the photo because there's so many more interesting little things to look at.
So those are some of my composition tips when taking portraits on an 85 millimeter lens. I'd love to know in the comments which one was your favorite one down below and if you're gonna use it maybe at your next shoot. I feel like the 35 and the 85 are my two favorite prime lenses. I love using them together. While I use the 35 a little bit more and the 85 less, I feel like there are some things the 85 millimeter really excels at and you can just take such a magical shot in some particular scenarios that I showed you guys today. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.